So the very first job I do when I'm cutting a roof is mark out a pattern rafter. That is really straightforward as well, once you know how. So the pattern rafter is determined by the span. The span simply means from one corner of the wall plates to the other corner. So it's exactly the same as these joints on these big bottom cords here, these trusses. So in my case, it's five meters, 800, and 90 millimeters. So I'll make a note of that, five meters, 890. Then I just tap that into my simple uh, roofing calculator, my simple app, and then that's it. So here also is the rod. Now this rod I set out for when I built these walls that come through here, all of the stud positions are exactly where the rafters go as well. I've also marked on here the trusses. So when I land this on the truss anywhere, it shows me where all my rafters are gonna go. The trusses are central of the garage doors and the rafters are also in relation to those so everything's spaced equally across the building. So I'm going to get down, I'm going to make a pair of rafters, I'm going to bring them up and clamp them to the side to mark exactly how the ridge is on each of the trusses because if you could imagine when you put these together those two little notches on the top of the king post they could be slightly to one side or slightly to the other and now it's a matter of making the pattern rafter i'm going to cut a 50 degree cut on the ends of all these timbers and then using the pattern mark out the bird's mouth and the foot cut the foot off cut the bird's mouth out i'm going to put a bevel on the bottom of the feet because they're on show and also pilot for the fixings as well, which is quite important. So I'm going to crack on with that. First job, set up my square. So basically I pop the rafter line here and 50 degrees, and then I just put my fence on, clamp it to that, which is what holds everything perfect for lots of repeat marking. Pull that round to 50 degrees. There, and the rafter run here. Clamp it off. And that is set. Well, that is set for the whole roof now. There we go, absolutely spot on. And this is my top cut. There's a thing there which indicates ridge and rafters. That's my top cut. And of course, this is the wall plate end there. So that's upright and that's level. Then we just cut some ends. I've got all the crowns of the rafter the same way. And then we're just gonna mark, mark these up and cut them off. And also our pattern. Quickly cut all those off. Checking the blades nice and square. sliding them backwards and forwards to get the saw in. That's done. Let's run the calculation. I'm going to go to my roofing square, put in the spam, which was 5890. I'm using a 40, call it 47 millimeter ridge, and I'm using a 50 degree roof. Then I press equals, and that will give me my rafter length. I'll write that down as well which is four meters, 545 millimeters. 
So the next thing I do is transfer that down the length of the pattern. So I hook the tape right on the end of the point. Measure down. Pull it up a bit so you can see. To four meters, 545 mil. Keep the tape nice and straight and taut. Mark that on the top edge. Four meters, 545. I'll mark another plumb cut or top cut straight down that line there. This represents the back of the wall plate right here. Then I want to put a bird's mouth in and that wants to be two thirds of the thickness of the timber. And to work that out, if you can just use your tape measure, take it to say 300, because it's easy to divide. And then that gives me 200, so 300, 200 is two thirds, just mark that on there. It's easier than dividing this, which is 146, all right? And then I put a seat cut, which is at 90 degrees to the top cut. So that's the wall plate position. Now we're going to put our soffit cut on and I want a drop of 200 millimetres. So I can just take 200 millimetres up here to the top of the plate and mark a seat cut, which is a soffit cut, which is level effectively. That's the bottom, that's the burst mouth, the top's cut, that's my pattern rafter. So now I'm going to break those out nice and accurately because we're going to use this to mark everything else. Finish that with a handsaw. We don't really want to overcut. If it was a long foot, you definitely don't want to overcut because it could weaken it. We'll just rub a handsaw in here. And that is our pattern. The saw's got a lovely sharp blade in it, and so the bottom of that foot, which is actually gonna be seen, is super smooth, which is lovely. Now, as I'm on my own, I wanna use these to mark the rest. Now, it's quite difficult to hold the top and the bottom. If there's two of you, one person can keep it held in the right place at the top. So what I like to do when I'm on my own is just mount on a little piece of timber over the top of the, of the bird's mouth, and then one on the point and one on the top there, then I can just lock it in mark the bottom so I don't have to hold the other end it just speeds things up so I'm going to go screw a couple of little blocks on the other end really well secured so you don't yank it and it moves then I'll mark these cut the bird's mouth and the feet cut and then I'm going to get my router out and put a nice bevel on the bottoms of those feet so I've cut some small pieces of OSB which are solid enough I'm going to fix them on close to the top here. So we're only hanging a little bit out here. We don't want it like that because it will move. We're going to fix that on really nice and tight. And we're going to put one on this end as well. Just like that. Let's turn it over to do that one. get it over here. That's my second pair of hands now. That's the cheapest assistant money can buy. 
All right, so that's really solid. And the idea is, if I just show you what that's going to do, when I mark the rafter out now, I'll just drop this template on top or pattern on top and I'm going to just pull it like that and even from the other end when I'm pulling it's going to locate it exactly where I want it makes it super super easy so it holds it all really nice and flush then I'm going to come down the other end that's holding it that's holding it on the back of the rafter nice and flush and then it's just a matter of marking everything and cutting it. I'm going to repeat that process, get them all cut, and then we'll crack on beveling the bottoms. Check the video description because in there, there'll be links to where I got this timber from. It's particularly good. And also the tools that I use, you can also find links to the tools that I use, especially the Hilti equipment there. Um, it's something I've been using for quite a while. So please check the video description. So I've raced through cutting those rafters. I've set up a router with a chamfer bit in it. Now it's got a guide bush on it or guide bearing as you can see, but I like to put a fence on as well because when you're going in and out of these, the guide bush will come off and it's a tendency to skirt that around the corner. You don't want that. So I'm just going to quickly route the ends of these and the following job will be drilling an eight mil hole up through the bird's mouth for my bottom fixings. And then I'll be drilling one at the purling position as well. Do all that on the ground so it's done. Then I'm going to stand them up, pull them against the trusses and put a small section of ridge into each one and mark that to suit the joint that I'm actually going to have on the ridges. Um, so that's basically what I'm going to be doing next. So I'll quickly route these off, drill the holes, and then stand them up.
that's those done. So now I'm going to drill the holes. That's why I've stacked them on their backs here. Just show you that. Got an eight mil drill bit. It's an eight mil fixing that I'm using. I'm just going to go straight through. I'm going to do the same again where the purlin is. And I'll measure, measure that down. Hook my tape in here, little cut. Both sides. Mark those up. Then we're going to counter bore the other side. The counter bore is simply a hole which will allow the fixing to go beneath. So it sets it under flush there and you can see that that's going to be fixed into the wall plate there or the purlin as the case may be. And that's all the rafters ready now. I'll probably wrap this video up here. Join me again when I start putting the rafters that I've made on. Um, I've tried a couple in. I've worked out how the ridge has got to be jointed into those beautiful king post trusses there. But we'll pick that up in the next episode. In the meantime, Thanks for watching, thanks for supporting. 